Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Oh my goodness, we have got two weeks now until the application deadlines for PhD programs in the USA, which is like roughly around the first week of December, I think. So today I'm gonna break down exactly how I got into Cornell University and how you can maximize your SOP to maximize your chances of getting into a PhD school in the USA. If you're thinking, oh my goodness, like but I've only got like two weeks left and I haven't even started, it's way too late. I wanna cut that out right there it is not too late. So the key things I want you to take away from this video is A, do not self-reject. You do still have time. And if you want to get some top, top, top tips, then keep watching this video. Okay, so let's dive in. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to think about is probably, in my opinion, the most important thing when you're writing your applications, and that is your SOP, or your statement of purpose, or your personal statement, or whatever you wanna call it. The thing that is gonna tell the graduate admissions team why you deserve a place at this university. So it's usually about like one to two pages long, depending on like each university's requirements. So first thing to do, check the requirements. Once you've checked the requirements, I would say the key things to focus on are, number one, experience. So this is where you basically highlight all your experience and all that incredible work that you got have been doing over the last few years that have boiled down to this very moment where the admissions team are going to read your SOP and be like, oh my goodness, this person has done so much work. So you really, really, really want to showcase all your experience, but don't just write it in a massive list. Or how I like to split it down is like you say what you've done, what your role was, what you learned from it, and then how you like apply that to future experiences. So how that led on to future projects or how that leads on to a transferable skill that is very important for this particular PhD program, for example. Anecdotes. Use some personal experiences and say what you learned from those and why that means that this PhD is for you. So when I'm saying that, I, I mean things like talking about your career ambitions. Like, do you want to go into academia? Do you want to go into industry? Do you want to start your own company? As Make sure they all link back to like this specific program. Like, so for example, for me as a vet, I found it really, really difficult to break into research. So I highlighted this in my SAP and I said, I found it really, really difficult to research. These are the things I did in my experience section to try and overcome this and make sure that I had enough research experience now to like expose myself to a apply to this program. And the reason I've chosen this program is because I found it so difficult as a vet to break into research. And Cornell, for example, openly encourages and actively involves veterinary professionals in biomedical research and interdisciplinary research. Use that personal experience that I'd had in the past and directly applied it to why I chose Cornell. So that also brings me on to like talking about different labs and like why you want to join specific labs. So a lot of people ask me like via LinkedIn, like, did you ever contact your professors before you applied to the program? I did not. So what I did do is I did do extensive research about Cornell and about what labs I wanted to work in. If I was concerned as to whether I thought I'd be a good fit because of like my background or whatever, I would occasionally send out like cold emails, but not asking to join their lab, just asking for general advice and just to find out a bit more about their research. So I didn't like push the hard sell yet because you're not in. But also say like, don't assume that you're in when you're writing these applications. Don't be like, I'm really excited to start working in this lab or anything. No, you're excited to at the prospect of having the opportunity. You know, there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Try not to cross it. <laughs> really, really hard to do, especially when you're like trying to showcase yourself. But like, yeah, like I recommend definitely having at least a paragraph dedicated to why you've chosen that specific university. Be that because of like the required courses or the supplementary stuff or the extracurricular activities involved in that university or those specific labs, like definitely have at least a paragraph dedicated to that. But I would also say like, don't just do it in that paragraph, like interweave it within your thing, but definitely demonstrate that you have looked into why you want to join that university. Oh my goodness, I am so thirsty. And then another thing we want to talk about is your accolades. Like we really want to be showcasing you, you know, you want to be saying like, I've done this and I've done this and I'm so amazing. So again, this brings me back to my experience thing. I would lay it out in exactly the same way. Maybe even interweave it with your experience. Like, hey, I did this inter internship. This was my role in it. This is what I learned. And I was even lucky enough to have presented it at this conference. But again, like, don't just say that you presented at that conference. What did you learn from presenting it at that conference? Did you learn how to scientifically communicate, how to write a poster? Did you like communicating with fellow scientists? Like how, how was that experience for you? What did you get out of it? And how was that like uh, fueled your ambition to want to study science more or study this area more, study that area more, you know? Like really try and not only link list your accolades because you definitely do want to be like, like presenting a poster is incredible. Like you definitely want to say that. Winning that fellowship, oh my goodness, like well done. Like you need to showcase that, but definitely say what you learned from it. I cannot stress that enough. People don't care what you've done unless you've got something out of it that you can like give back. So now I want to talk 
about the second probably most important aspect of your thing, in my opinion, is probably your references, because this is from people who've like actively worked with you and who are gonna really showcase um, what you're like to work with, what you're like as a scientist, what you're like in all of these things. So I picked my references like very carefully. Always contact more than you think you're gonna need because I've definitely had some instances. Um, there were some people that like maybe weren't able to meet the deadline, you know? I really wanna stress the importance of choosing people carefully and giving them enough notice. Contact your referees months in advance if you know you're applying because people are busy, especially professors and bosses and all of these things, you know? So like definitely, definitely, definitely contact them in advance and make sure that they're gonna give you a positive review. You don't just want someone to say, yes, I can confirm that they work here, you know? Cause that doesn't really say very much. They're not allowed to say anything negative in references. So if you get that, like it's not really doing much for you, but definitely try and get someone who you have a good relationship with. Maybe it's an undergraduate professor. Maybe it's a previous supervisor. Maybe it's someone from your master's degree. Maybe it's someone you did some freelance science work. I don't even know if that's the thing. Maybe it is, you know, contact them. And now we are on to the resume and the resume is kind of like a snapshot of your best moments. Like I could make a whole video on how to write a resume. And I think I probably will because there's a lot of differences between like resumes and CVs, blah, 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 blah. But let's just say for this resume, like you really want to highlight your bestest things. One thing I would say about this is use action words. That is my like number one tip. Initiated this experiment implemented this thing, designed X, Y, Z. Don't just be like, oh, I kind of helped like write it and stuff. People want to know what you did as part of that research project. So definitely like showcase that by using action words. And that is all I'm going to say on resumes for now. Okay, so I've talked a lot very quickly because this is a subject that I'm very, very, very passionate about um, in case you can't really tell. So what I do want to do is I just want to end on how I personally managed to get into Cornell. I planned ahead. I tried to get as much experience as I possibly, possibly, possibly could. Um, please see some of my other videos for exactly how I did that, but I implemented those exact strategies basically. So like I'll link a couple below. Definitely would recommend having to, a bit of a watch of those, especially if you're trying to get more research experience and you're looking ahead to like maybe next year. If you already have all your experience, um, for, I basically followed that exact framework that I've just kind of described before, but the top takeaways that I would say is enthusiasm and passion go a very, very, very long way. People want someone who's going to excel in the PhD program and a PhD is a very, very, very long time, which means you have to be enthusiastic and passionate about your work. So you really, really, really have to showcase that in your SOP. So that goes back to what I was saying before about like not just listing your experience, but li listing like what you learned from that and how that has influenced your career ambitions and your wanting to do this exact PhD program. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that that's been helpful. I've just shared kind of like my exact framework for how I kind of phrased my PhD and did all that kind of stuff. Um, so I really, really hope that that has been helpful and that there are some helpful tips in there for you. Please don't forget to like, you liked it, and please subscribe if you want to see more PhD content and I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.